Hi everyone, my name is Jackson. I'm a corporate systems engineer here at AGI. Today I'm going to be walking you through a scenario that works with Analyzer, which is one of the products that we work with, and it will show you how to expand the type of analysis that Analyzer naturally does using what's called a macro, which is something within the Analyzer tool. So to get us started, I'm just going to acquaint you very quickly, very briefly with the scenario that we have right here. We have one coverage definition that goes from, I believe, 20 degrees latitude to negative 20 degrees. We have two satellites called Coverage Sat Chris and Coverage Sat Cross, and each satellite has an attached sensor. This coverage definition has the sensors of these satellites assigned as the assets, so these sensors will be the things that are used to calculate various coverage metrics and values. What we want to do is we want to create a study that shows us how varying certain aspects of the satellite's orbital elements affects the results that we get in the calculations with the coverage definition. You might be able to intuitively understand that if you make the semi major axis larger or you change the inclination, then the amount of time or the area covered in this coverage definition will change noticeably. Obviously, one way that you could do it is by hand, so to speak, and go through the GUI. You open up the satellite properties, you change the values, whichever value you care about, and you save, you exit out, and you recompute. This is a totally valid process, but if you have tens or hundreds of runs that you want to do, then maybe you want to do it a little bit faster. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to Analysis, go down to Analyzer, and open up the Analyzer tool. So you're going to see a lot of different things in this window. On the left, we have the SDK variables, which will just give you a representation of the object browser and SDK itself. Then you have property variables, which is basically your inputs. You have data provider variables, which are your outputs. And then you have analyzer variables, which are your selected inputs and outputs. So what we're going to do first is we're going to open coverage sat Chris first, and we're going to open Propagator. And then we're going to click semi-major axis we're going to drag it over to inputs. We're going to do the same thing for coverage sat cross. So open propagator. And then semi-major axis. We're going to drag that over. So now these two semi-major axis values are selected as our inputs. Next, we're going to go down to region of interest, which is the name of our coverage definition. And all of these values will show up in the data provider section because, again, these are outputs. We want to make sure to click this Show All Data Providers box because, as the name suggests, it gives us a lot more different options to choose from. So we're going to go down to, let's do Coverage by Latitude. We're going to expand that box. We're going to click, let's do Percent Time Covered. We're going to drag it over to Outputs, and now it's an option for us to choose. From here, we're going to do a parametric study, which is varying one variable and seeing all of the resulting outputs. So we're going to click this box right here. And what we're going to see is a list of all of the things that we've chosen, all the inputs and outputs, as well as some of the design parameters for this parametric study. So first, we're going to click semi-major axis. We're going to drag it over here. So that lets us know that we're going to be varying the semi-major axis value. Let's have it start at 6678 kilometers and go to 8,000 kilometers. And just for the sake of this video, let's have it do three sample runs uh, just to keep the runtime down. And next, we're going to go down to, let's do percent time covered. We're going to drag that into the responses or the output section. And next, we're going to hit run, and we're going to let it run. So Analyzer creates the runs. It, it populates a default viewer, which in this case is a 2D scatter plot. If you want a different kind of graph, you can click this Add View and select whichever one is relevant or uh, useful for your analysis. And Analyzer will update each value as it finishes the run. So as you see here, we have two values already input, and now we have all three. So you'll see that on the x-axis, we have the same major axis values. On the y-axis, we have percent time covered. You'll notice that if you minimize the graph, you see sort of a table that gives you all of the, the calculated values. But something doesn't seem right, because we wanted to figure out values as it corresponds to lines of latitude but we only have one, one value corresponding to each run. So what Analyzer does is it gives you the first line of the report that you would generate in SDK. And what we're going to do today is we're going to create what's called a macro. And this macro will, on every one run, it will create an Excel document. It will create a sheet on that Excel document wherein it gives you each line of latitude, the total time covered, and the percent area covered. 
and then it iterates and it keeps building until you finish all of your runs. So that afterwards, you'll have this graph that Analyzer gives you, but you'll also have an Excel document with all of the data tabulated and formulated as you'd want it. So what we're going to do is we're going to X out of this, trade study. And another thing that we want to be able to do is, as you notice, we have satellite Chris and satellite cross. So perhaps we want to vary the semi-major axis values together. And that's what we're going to try and do here. In this macro, we're also going to do something that allows us to change one value that corresponds to both values. That allows us to still do a parametric study because parametric studies only let you change one value. So what we're going to do is we're going to open the macro button. So if you look in this macro editor here, we have a, a couple of things to look at. In the left-hand side, we see all STK scenarios. And then under that, we have current STK scenarios. So for all STK scenarios, anything you put in these sections will effectively become your analyzer default until you go in and change that. So if we were to do something for this particular scenario that creates this Excel document, even if we were to exit out of this scenario and open an entirely different scenario, any other time you would do a parametric study, Analyzer would try to do the same thing. So we're not going to do anything for all SDK scenarios right now because we just care about this particular scenario. So we're going to go to current SDK scenario. If you look at current SDK scenario, we have end, init, post run, and pre run. And what these correspond to are sections of code that will be run at certain points during the analysis. So end will be run at the end of the entire parametric study in it will be run before the parametric study actually begins. Post run will be after each individual run, and pre run, as the name suggests, will be before each individual run. So we're going to open the init macro. So once we have the init macro, you'll see that I already have a number of things set up in this section. So the first thing we have is we have these three lines here, these three variables. So what these variables do is it te they tell Analyzer that these are values that you are going to store throughout the entirety of this analyzer run. So the first variable we have is called SMA. We declare what type of variable it is. So it's a double input, and the, or it's a double, and the input units are in kilometers. The lower bound is 6678.14, and the upper bound is 8,000. And we have a description, which isn't immediately necessary, but is nice just for sort of record keeping. Below that, we have variable unsaved runs, which is a double input, and we have variable saved runs, which is a double input. These two together are going to be used to keep track of how many runs have been done so that we can make sure that our Excel document is formatted nicely and lines up with whatever value we have for that particular run. After that, you need to make sure to have active equal true, so that lets Analyzer know that this macro will be in use. And then from there, you have sub on init. And at the end of all the things that you write, you have n sub. This is letting Analyzer know that this is the actual part of the code that you're going to run. So the first thing we have is we have app.setValue model.stk.unsavedruns. Whenever you're setting a value of a variable that will be changed, this is the syntax that you use. You're basically telling Analyzer that you are plugging in this value for this number, for this variable that will exist throughout the entire run. Below that, we have set root equals app.get component model.stk.userData. This is letting Analyzer know that we are grabbing onto the, the instance of SDK that is currently open. And we will have that for the duration of this particular macro. Below that, we have the setup Excel document. So we're going to create an Excel object. We're going to set the Excel object equal to a new Excel application. We're going to make it vis we're going to set visible equal to false and display alerts equal to false just to minimize the amount of time that it takes to go through these sorts of things. If you don't visualize things until the end, it makes it a lot easier and quicker for the runs. Next, we're going to open an Excel workbook and we're going to add a new one. We're going to save it to this is my particular file path, so this is where I'll save it on my desktop and you would want to change that to whatever your location is. And then we're going to save this Excel document, we're going to close this Excel document and we close it out. And this is what happens at the beginning of every initialized run. So before you even do a parametric study, if you were to open one and then minimize everything, you'll see that there will be an Excel document by the name of coverage by latitude on your desktop. It's important to know that variables defined within the sub on init section do not carry over from macro to macro. That's why we have these variables defined outside of the sub init section up here. So now that we've finished the init or the initialization macro, next we're going to go to pre-run. This one is a lot quicker and a lot smoother. 
So what we're doing here, as I said before, we wanted to make something such that we could just vary one value, and that will correspond to two values in the analyzer run. This makes it so that we don't have to do a carpet plot or a design of experiment plot. That gives us a lot more values that we actually don't care about. When we do it this way, we have it so that every single run is just two satellites at the same semi-major axis that is being varied throughout the entirety of the trade study. So what we do is we do app.set value, and then we do a series of calls to get down to the semi-major axis of the satellite in question. And then we do, we do app.set value, get down to that point, comma, app.get value. So what this is saying is we're setting the value to this value that we're getting elsewhere. We're doing the same thing for both runs, and this makes it so that both of the satellites are able to get the same exact value, which we have varied throughout the duration of this trade study. Finally, we have post-run, which involves a little bit more of our integration style of work, which you can see on various pieces of our documentation online. So what we're going to do is we're going to get the model.stk. We're going to get the SDK instance here. We're going to set it as a root. From there, we're going to get all the data providers within this section of SDK. So we're going to call the coverage definition. We're going to get all the way down to it. We're going to grab onto it. We're going to get the latitude. We're going to get the data sets by name, the latitude, percent time covered, total time covered. We save those as a series of arrays. Then we open up this workbook, this Excel workbook that we created in the initialization run a couple of steps before. We're going to get all the way down to the right workbook sheet that we want. We're going to do a couple of things just to name it, just for sort of record keeping. So we'll have each sheet named semi-major axis equals whatever the value is for this particular run. And then we have a couple of formatting things. We have the first line be latitude, the second cell be percent time covered, the third cell be total time covered. And then we do a simple for loop. We iterate through the arrays that we've created up here. And then we put them into the Excel cell values. And then we increment our counter to let the analyzer run know that, OK, we finished this run. Next time that you do it, do it on the next sheet. And we close everything out. We save everything out. And that's it. So once you've done all of those things, we've created a set of analyzer macros that allows us to create an Excel worksheet. We are able to write to that Excel worksheet every single time. Where are we able to create a new sheet, write the necessary data, close it, save it. And we're also able to vary the satellites with the same semi-major axis for each run in the trade study. So after we press OK, what we're going to do is we're going to go to parametric study. And now you'll see that we have some new variables down here because this is based off of the macros that we've just built. So what we want to do, instead of doing the semi-major axis that we had before, we're just actually going to drag SMA, which is the name of the variable that we created. And what this is saying is we're going to vary the SMA variable. This SMA variable then in turn varies the satellite variables. So again, we'll just do 6678.14 and 8,000. And we'll have three runs. And this time we'll do, again, percent time covered. And then we just hit run. So once we've hit run, you'll see that we have three, three values. We have the semi-major axis, the percent time covered. And again, this is not the main part, but just to show you that it did run. And if we go to our desktop and we open the coverage by latitude Excel document that we have here, we have semi-major axis equals 6678.14, the latitude lines, percent time covered, total time covered. And we have the same for semi-major axis of 7339.07 and semi-major axis of 8,000. And that is how you use those macros. And now you have this Excel document, which has all the data that you need already formatted as you would nicely want. And the great thing about these macros is this is a basic framework for doing this sort of analysis with any other type of report. You just have to change a couple of things in the data providers, but the framework is set to have this Excel document hold everything else. Thanks for watching. Uh, this has been Jackson, again, at AGI. Hope you had a good time.